one thing we know for sure about oil right now is that Wall Street doesn't have a clue where it's headed. I've looked through all of the research covered from the major brokerage houses, and their forecasts are so wildly divergent that I figure some of these analysts are just guessing. And that's before all the chatter we heard about at a possible emergency OPEC meeting as West Texas Intermediate once again traded under $50 today. So at what point is it safe to start picking at a high-quality domestic exploration production company like Simrex? That's XEC for you home gamers. Simrex is a mid-sized, extraordinarily well-run oil and gas producer, major acreage in Texas's Permian Basin, Oklahoma's can of Woodford Shale, as well as some exploratory assets along the Gulf Coast and some New Mexican assets. Back in the third quarter of last year, before the collapse, and oil prices got truly hideous. Simrex did something that looks incredibly savvy in retrospect. They sold off $460 million of non-core assets, strengthening the company's balance sheet and allowing it to focus on its best performing holdings. Now, Simrex reported back on February 17th, slashing its capital expenditures budget in half and reducing its full-year production guidance, uh, but it's still uh, forecasted down 3 to uh, plus 8% growth. It's still going to grow. More important, though, management indicated that they'd be willing to make some opportunistic acquisitions if they see any deals that are truly worth doing. At these levels, Simrex is, is down 35 bucks from its all-time high, but the stock has rallied nearly $23 since the price of crude stopped plummeting in mid-January, which is a pretty big run. Still, the bounce seems pretty deserving, given how conservatively run and prescient the company's been. So let's take a closer look with Thomas Jordan, the chairman, president, and CEO of Simrex Energy, get a better sense of where his company is headed and what's going on in the oil industry in general. Mr. Jordan, welcome back to me have money. Good to see you, sir. Jim, how are you? Thank you, Tom. Thank you for coming on. Right. Well, I've got to tell you, you've done a lot of things right. You raised the capital when everyone else was plunging all in for drilling. You uh, have said over and over again, look, you're going to be very disciplined. But the, my favorite quote on this whole conference call that you just did, we are not shipwreck victims waiting for rescue. That really is, and you do stand out because of that. Well, that, that speaks a lot about our organization. I mean, you know, these are tough times. Yeah. So first off, you have to have good assets. I mean, there's no substitute for quality assets. Right. You have to have a balance sheet to capitalize those assets. But third and most importantly, you have to have an organization that's innovative, that can weather through a very, very difficult environment. And I'm really pleased to say Simrex looks very good in all three fronts. But one of the things that is astounding people is you can cut your, your drilling budget dramatically, and yet you're still going to have production growth. How is that possible? Well, a lot of that's baked in from the flurry of activity that we entered the year in, and you're going to see that across the sector. There were, really, through the fourth quarter of 2014, a lot of companies in our space had tremendous activity levels, right. and so there's a big backlog of wells to be completed. So we, we benefit from that going into 2015. But we think at our, at our lower uh, rig count, which will be down to six rigs, no. back down from the mid-20s, wow. so it has a significant cut. We think we can throttle ahead and still preserve that optionality for our future growth when indeed things stabilize. Well, and you did say in the call, we may not have seen the bottom uh, of, of the correction yet. So it's not like you're saying, listen, it's it, under 50 is the level to, that you should decide to start things up. We've always done a terrible job predicting these price swings. <laughs> you know, people ask me, were you surprised by the price swing? And, to me, that's like asking people in California, were you surprised by that big earthquake? Right. I mean, we always knew the price collapse was a possibility. We managed the company for it with our balance sheet health. But when it comes, it's stunning. And so as, as we look ahead, we're not convinced we've seen the bottom. We're managing the company with a very short-term focus on our balance sheet and our capital expenditures and a long-term focus on our assets and our organization. But you're not hedging here. No, we, we've always taken the approach that hedging is a zero-sum game in the long run. We have our balance sheet, which is our, our biggest hedge. Now, there's times when you're ahead and times when you're behind in that game. So clearly, do I wish we were fully hedged? You bet I do. Now, uh, you did point out that there are a lot of people chasing here. I mean, a lot of people think, wow, you know, when it collapses, it'll just be this big void. But you talk about private equities in. Are too many people waiting for a bottom? Well, I think people are prudent and cautious. I, I think that there's still some rationalization to happen. I mm -hmm. think there's, there's still some companies that are talking about growth, and that to us seems like the wrong focus. I, right. think, I think prudence and caution is the right focus. We'll see how it shakes out. I, mean, I know there's a lot of conversation about mergers and acquisitions right. in our sector, but you know, uh, the bid-ask spread is still quite okay. high. 
you have an amazing board. You have the senior people from Occident, from Texaco, Helmbrook. I mean, you have the most heavyweight of the independent boards. What are they saying in that room? Are they, are they saying this is, you, you, the, the, who knows will ever come back, that United States is no longer going to be the, this, re, there will be a renaissance? Are, are they worried longer term? You know, we have a great board, and I appreciate you noticing that. We, we have a very experienced board and a board that also shares our long time horizon. Mm -hmm. we, we don't know where the price will ultimately settle. What we do know, if the United States is going to become a swing producer, which it sounds like that's yes, the, like the, the OPEC, direction. Like, yes, like OPEC, like Saudis. So it's got to settle at a price that differentiates onshore U.S. plays. At $90 oil, almost everything worked. At $50 oil, virtually nothing, nothing works. works. So it's going to have to be somewhere in between. I'll say this. We're going to emerge from this a different industry. Costs are going to count in a way they haven't in the past. Right. Organizational effectiveness will count. Prudent resource development. We all, we all have these huge projects and being able to manage them effectively, have the organizational wherewithal to look strategically at our assets and be a low cost producer. That will be the difference between companies that survive and thrive and those that falter. One last question. Where does it go? Where is your oil going? Because it doesn't seem like you're able to get that posted price right now. Well, uh, you know, we sell into a couple of markets. We sell into WTI Midland. Okay. We sell into WTI Cushing. And of course, there's also lo there's al always local market deducts. We pay transportation. Mm -hmm. We pay you know whatever bottleneck price is available right. to us. We generally get posted price less fairly insignificant okay. deducts. Well, you've done an amazing job, and of the ones that are going to come back the hardest are the ones that are most disciplined, and yours is the most I've seen so far. Well, thank you, Jim. That's Tom Jordan. He's chairman, president, and CEO of Simrex, XEC. Go read their documents. You'll see some guys did not just borrow the heck out of the banks, take money from the public. Some guys have cash in the bank. They have money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.